from the promised land. Ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. I was profoundly impressed when I first saw this video and saw a, an underwater camera let down over the side of a ship on the Red Sea. And that camera went down and took pictures along the bottom of the Red Sea of chariot wheels and the remains of Pharaoh's army. It's still there after 3,500 years. And of course, the gentleman who published or put out this uh, video has now published the book. He calls it The Exodus Case. We've just got to tell you about it on today's Prophecy in the News. Gary Stimmer is here to discuss with me The Exodus Case. JR, this is <clears throat> a masterpiece of detective work that you, you simply have to uh, look at it that way. Dr. Leonard Muller, who is a Swedish, uh, actually is a physician, but he's also a toxicologist, he's a biologist, he's a marine biologist, uh, he has studied archaeology, and he's combined all of these uh, the persuasions together uh, and, and has gone out and done some detective work between Abraham's uh, birth, his migration down to Canaan, uh, the Exodus, the route of the Exodus, and when he finally finished uh, this book, J.R., he has uh, laced together a timeline, uh, uh, genealogies, he's put it all together uh, in a gorgeous book, beautifully produced book, uh, to give you an insight into the period of the patriarchs that you simply couldn't get any other way. Over 300 pages, clay coated, full color, full process color, over 570 photographs, and uh, we want to show you this book on today's Prophecy in the News. And Gary, one of the interesting things about this book is that uh, he does such a magnificent job starting right at the very beginning. And I want us to turn to page 24 and 25 and talk about the Ur of the Chaldees. You know, a lot of theologians have said that the Ur of the Chaldees is down near the mouth of the uh, Euphrates-Tigris River, mm -hmm. uh, right at the, uh, at the beginning of the uh, Persian Gulf. But according to this book, it's located in Turkey. There is another Ur, and it's up there where all the other sites are located that has to do with Nimrod and Haran and Sarag and, and uh, Tera, Abraham's uh, offspring. It's fascinating. Uh, J.R., to be honest, uh, uh, when, you, when you really look at the history of Abraham, and uh, scholars have done this for years, they have recognized that there's an Ur down by the Persian Gulf, but there's also a northern Ur, and there's been some scholarly dispute over the years as to which is the real Ur of the Chaldees, uh, but as far as I know, no one before Leonard Muller came along and documented it this way and I, I think essentially proves uh, that Ur of the Chaldees it has a northern location. I'm looking at my Bible here and uh, uh, Genesis chapter 12 <coughs> when uh, the Lord spoke to Abram and said, I want you to go to a, a new place. Here in Genesis 12, 4 it says, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. So here uh, he is leaving Haran. J.R., this is fascinating, isn't it? Yes, it is, because we've always looked at Haran as being in Turkey, just north of the border of, uh, you know, right at the Euphrates River. And uh, Haran is there, of course, nobody disputes that. But just a few miles from Haran is a little town called Ur. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and listen to what he quotes from the Encyclopedia Britannica. This concerns the Ur in Turkey. The quote, the town lies in the fertile plain of Haran, or Haran, ringed by limestone hills on three sides. Traditions of the earliest foundations associate the site with the legendary King Nimrod, 
and the Muslim legends associate the place with Abraham. A cave beneath Urfa's citadel is said to be Abraham's birthplace. The town's modern name is derived from its early Aramaic name of Urchai. Well, Gary, this has got to be the era of the Chaldees we're talking about here. And, and uh, right here on page 25 of uh, Leonard Muller's book, we have a, a, a photograph uh, showing a, a traffic sign on the road to Haran. And it says, Haran, 10 kilometers. Down at the bottom of that same page, JR, is another traffic sign that says, Nemrut Dagi, 15 kilometers down the road. Well, yes. Nimrut is the modern word for Nimrod, and Daki means mountain in, in the Turkish dialect, so it's Mount Nimrod here, 15 kilometers dead ahead. And you can actually, when you re read this book, uh, the text is accompanied by all these beautiful pictures. Yes. Now, uh, there is a book called Jasher that is quoted in the Old Testament, so it dates way back into antiquity. Tell us about Abraham and his problems with King Nimrod. <laughs> yes. So if Nimrod ruled in this area, certainly this must be the place where Abraham came from. Now, another interesting thing is, I see on page 26 here, a little road sign that says Shinar. Mm -hmm. It spells C-I-N-A-R, and the Bible spells it in our English translation. King James translation is S H. I-N-A-R. Same place, Gary. It's Absolutely. Well, if you look at carefully, it, it spells C-I-N-A-R, but the C has a little stroke at the bottom of it, which means pronounced this like an S. Uh, Sinar, which is not very far f uh, from the, the pronunciation, Shinar. And, and J.R. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Muller concludes a map showing how the plain of Shinar and this modern city of Sinar locates Mm -hmm. uh, all of uh, these, these various uh, biblical uh, cities together, kind of pulls them together into one spot. Now, we've heard of the Ur of the Chaldees, and uh, some Bible scholars have said that uh, the word Chaldees is of such ancient variety that nobody knows where it came from. But Leonard Moeller in this book, The Exodus Case, has uh, found a collection of gods called the Chaldees. <laughs> and they just happen to be um, worshipped in this very area. And one inscription, he says, reads, quote, This is the spoil of the cities which I obtained for the people of Chaldees in one year. To Chaldees the giver, to the Chaldees the supreme givers, the children of Chaldees the mighty. And so, obviously, this has, this, there are so many um, so many clues yeah. that point to this area. It, it has to be the right one. Uh, uh, for example, the, the word Chaldees in the uh, Ur of the Chaldees, Chaldees in the modern dialect in Turkey uh, is K-A-L-E, pronounced Kali or Kali. And we have here a road sign that says Aksakali with an arrow pointing how to get to Aksakali. Or, and there's another road si sign he took a picture of, Eski Kali, 17 kilometers. And then there's Yeni Kali. And so the Chaldean name is linked to this very area, which, by the way, is not very far from uh, the mountains of Ararat, traditionally linked with uh, Noah's Ark. Yeah. But that's another story. Now, we've just talked about one part of this book. The book shows the pictures of the chariot wheels and the uh, chariot axles and uh, piles of human bones and bones of horses and bones of cattle uh, at the bottom of the Red Sea. And uh, it also takes us to uh, Mount Horeb in Arabia, not, not the Santa Catrina Monastery Sinai, but another Sinai, and shows us tremendous color photographs of all the area. It's act actually a great book. And I want to offer it to you. Uh, I want you to get it, to study for yourself and see the tremendous research that's gone into this book. Uh, it sells for $34.95. Order it from us here at Prophecy in the News by calling the phone number at the bottom of your screen. That's $34.95 plus shipping and handling. And your gift or contribution for this book will help us to pay for airtime and be able to stay on the air. And of course, as I've told you, uh, we have in the past offered the Exodus Revealed video, which is the companion to this book. 
and I want to offer it to you again. If you don't have it, it's $19.95. If you order both the book and the video, then we will send you, as a bonus, a one-year subscription to our magazine, monthly magazine, Prophecy and the News. The next 12 issues can be yours when you order both the book and the, the video. Now, the video comes in VHS for $19.95, or it comes in DVD with extra footage, two hours more of extra footage of uh, video, and this one is $24.95. So remember, you can order it by itself, or you can get the book and the video, either one, your choice of the DVD or the VHS, and we will send you the bonus. Only if you order both the book and the video, we'll send you your subscription to Prophecy in the News. Call the phone number at the bottom of your screen, write it down, and call in. We need to hear from you today. Gary, this idea of the origin of the Chaldees is absolutely fascinating, but let's go over and talk about Joseph for a minute mm -hmm. and the idea that he is the ancient Imhotep, Imhotep of Egyptian history. Now, if you love detective stories, this is the book for you. And J.R., I can't think of a better introduction to the period of the patriarchs uh, coming down to the time of Joseph uh, in Egypt. Everything is documented, photographed, uh, and scrupulously uh, presented in a way that, that, that builds the case point upon point upon point so that you can easily follow it. Now, uh, Joseph uh, was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was taken down to Egypt. That's a matter of history. He became very high in government in Egypt. How high did he get? And is there documentary evidence uh, as to his presence in Egypt. Well, up to now, J.R., uh, very few people have bothered to go beyond just the initial conjecture. Well, Leonard Muller goes far beyond uh, conjecture, uh, and, and he makes a case that perhaps Imhotep, a pharaoh, may well have been Joseph. Well, you know, he quotes a, um, a statement here, an inscription found on s uh, some foundations, carved uh, name, in, quote, Inhotep, Chancellor of the King of Lower Egypt, Chief under the King, Administrator of the Great Palace, Hereditary Lord, High Priest of Heliopolis, Imhotep the Builder, the Sculptor, the Maker of Stone Vases. And so even though he was not the Pharaoh per se, he was the governor under Pharaoh, and uh, sounds, it sounds just like what is spoken of Imhotep. And he makes the point in case after case after case that whenever you run into documentation about Imhotep, it invariably seems to suggest the life of Joseph. Uh, for example, an inscription here <coughs> uh, uh, written by Pharaoh Djoser, the 18th the year of his reign, uh, and this inscription says, I was in distress on the great throne, talking about uh, the Imhotep. Uh, speaking of his own great distress while he was on the throne. And he, he couples this with Genesis 41, 8, it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. That is the spirit of Joseph. And he begins to make these points, J.R. Well, in the text of the inscription, Pharaoh is worried about the coming famine and ask Imhotep who the god of the Nile is so that he can pray to this god. Quote, I ask him who was the chamberlain, Imhotep, the son of Ptah. What is the birthplace of the Nile? Who is the God there? Who is the God? Imhotep answers, quote, I need the guidance of him who presides over the fouling net. And so Joseph answers Pharaoh in Genesis 41, 16, it is not in me, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And uh, so it's fascinating uh, what he has to say about Joseph and Imhotep. Well, Gary, let's move on to the route to the Exodus. When Moses <clears throat> led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he led them right straight east toward the land of Midian. Uh, instead of going north up the land of the Philistines, uh, he went straight east. And the question is asked here on page 169, why did the people of Israel choose the route they took? Mm. I think the answer is obvious, Gary. Exodus chapter 3, verse 12, God says, go get the people and bring them back to worship me at this mountain. So 
he had no choice but to take them to Sinai. It was the goal of, of the Lord to bring the Israelites to the mountain of God, Mount Horeb, which, by the way, is located on the eastern shore of the Red Sea. <clears throat> and J.R., uh, the thing that, that fascinates me uh, and the thing that I would like to impart uh, to our uh, viewing audience today is that when, when Dr. Muller began to document the route of the Exodus, he said, well, this is very simple. There's a road that runs right across the Sinai Peninsula, and it's called the Southern Road, and it runs basically from uh, west to east. It's been there for actually millennia. It's still there today. It's a straight road, and essentially that's where Moses took the children of Israel. He documents this very carefully, and then there is a little twist in the narrative. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you've just got to have this book. Um, 317 pages, 570 photographs. It shows you the chariot wheels at the bottom of the Red Sea. It shows you the uh, bones of the humans, uh, human bones, cattle bones, horses bones. Uh, shows you all kinds of uh, buckboards of uh, carts and chariots at the bottom of the Red Sea. And that crossing, that eight-mile crossing, it is absolutely fabulous. I want you to get this from us for a gift of $34.95 plus shipping and handling. Will you order it today? Here's the phone number at the bottom of the screen. Just uh, write it down, call it, and order the book, The Exodus Case. Now, we have also offered, uh, been offering for some months, The Exodus Revealed, which is the companion video to the book. And we want to make that available to you as well, if you don't have it, $19.95 plus shipping and handling on VHS, or for $5 more, you can get it on DVD. Uh, this uh, VHS has 60 minutes of a, of a tremendous documentary, well produced. This one has the 60-minute documentary plus two hours of extra footage. And uh, this one is $24.95. Now, if you get the book and the video, your choice of either the DVD or the VHS, we want to add a year subscription to our magazine, Prophecy in the News, free. It's a, a $29.95 uh, year subscription, and we'll just throw that in as our way of saying thank you for ordering the book and the video. Now, if you order either the book or the video, you'll not be getting the magazine. You have to order both of them. And uh, then, of course, on the video, your choice of either the VHS or the DVD. Be sure and tell the operator when you talk to her. Call the phone number at the bottom of your screen and order today. Gary? Well, J.R., to continue this interesting story, <clears throat> the Israelites uh, went right across the desert in a straight line. But, and they could easily have marched right around the north end of the Red Sea at what is today called a lot, and then gone right down the uh, eastern shore to the Mount of God, Mount Horeb, and it would have been a very direct route for them. But before they got to the Red Sea, uh, the Lord said, follow me. Using that pillar of fire by night, that pillar of smoke by day, they followed him, and they went off the beaten path down into the Badlands, so to speak, Mm -hmm. zigzagged around, and then they found themselves right at the edge of the Red Sea. And Dr. Mullert does a very good job of documenting where they ended up and why. And the result uh, was the threefold downfall of Pharaoh. Uh, God had them go that way because if they had taken the straight road, he could have easily followed them and annihilated them. So he was confused. Secondly, uh, their uh, zigzagging through the wilderness allowed Pharaoh and his armies to catch up. And thirdly, it led the Egyptian army into a place where they could be punished by God if they chose to try to wipe out the Israelites. In other words, this was not an accidental wandering in the wilderness. These people were led by God to the precise spot where the Egyptian army uh, would be overthrown. And he does a marvelous job of documenting this. Yes, he does. And from the Nueva Peninsula, right down in about halfway from the north to the south end of the Red Sea, or Gulf of Aqaba, we call it today, this Nueva Peninsula has a land bridge across to the other shore. Now, the fascinating thing is, to the north of this land bridge, 
It's 900 yards deep. That's 2,700 feet, half a mile deep. On the south side of this land bridge, it's as deep as 1,900 yards. Uh, Gary, that's about, that's over a mile yes. deep. But the land bridge itself, let's talk about how deep it is. Well, J.R., right there at the Nueva Peninsula and then extending east across the Red Sea is this beautiful underwater land bridge that is about um, 100 meters out, out in the center of the Red Sea, about 100 meters below the surface, about 300 feet. About the uh, depth of a length of a football field. Yeah, about the length of a football field deep. And uh, the beautiful thing about it, J.R., is it's a white, sandy, smooth, uh, surface and uh, not rocky, uh, not irregular, no no steep drop-offs, and, and so it, it appears very obvious the Lord simply moved the water away from there, caused a wind to blow, and dried that surface out. <laughs> what wind could blow a 300-foot wall of water? Uh, what about the tides? Is it possible? No, it's not possible that the tides could could uh, uh, open up that land bridge. It had to take an absolute miracle of God. There's no other way. It cannot be explained in the physical terms. Well, J.R., the, the, the word of the Lord says that those waters stood upright in a heap. That's the exact phrase that's used. Yeah. Now, water does not heap up, and particularly, it does not heap up 300 feet. If you can imagine the look of a of a wall of water 300 feet high, that would yeah. be a staggering sight. As tall as a 30-story building. Yeah. On either side, a wall of water as tall as a 30-story building, eight miles in length. Can you imagine such a thing? Yeah. <laughs> and these people walked right down into that and across and over to the other side. Now, here comes Pharaoh's army. They get down in the middle of that thing and the wheels fall off their chariots, and they, yeah. they break down in the middle of it. How can this be? Gary? Well, here's the wording that says, It came to pass in the, in the morning, uh, watch, the Lord looked to the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and, and of cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily. So the Egyptians uh, f basically fled. Now, J.R., the Lord did something to the chariots of the Egyptians, which were out there on that beautiful land crossing, uh, wonderful terrain, nice and dry, and yet the Lord took the wheels off their chariots somehow so, so that it drove the chariots heavily. And uh, the only thing I can imagine is that he, he pressed down on them, maybe caused a local change in, in the gravity that made those chariots so heavy their wheels broke. I don't know, but it, it has to be a miracle. The interesting thing is those chariot wheels are still there. 600 chariots and uh, a significant number of them are still there, uh, I, 300 feet below the surface yes. and uh, up to just, uh, I guess, 50 feet below the surface, wherever, mm -hmm. wherever the depth is. Uh, and they put an underwater camera down there and took pictures of them. Now, there's a drop-off on either side, one down 900 feet, another uh, 900 yards, another one 1,900 yards, or over a mile, from a half a mile on one side to a mile deep on the other side. And I know that if you were to take a ship there and to examine it carefully, you would find more chariot wheels and more debris that have been washed down the sides into the canyons below the surface mm -hmm. of the water. J.R., we're running short on time. I wish we had lots more time to talk about this amazing book. Uh, there's something we really should talk about, and that's uh, on page 251 and following in this book, there is a series of pictures of the mountain of God, Mount Horeb, yes. uh, showing this, this rock mountain that's blackened on top as if it's been burnt. And, and uh, Dr. Muller asks the question, do the people of Israel reach Mount Sinai? That's his question. He then goes on to answer this question in the affirmative, documenting the things they left behind in the area, which are many, by the way, which is an archaeological study in itself, and there's simply page after page after page of pictures around the base of Mount Horeb showing that, indeed, the Israelites were there. It's a fascinating read. You've got to read it. 
570 photographs, 300 plus pages, and it's all in full color. We want you to get the book from us, will you? Order it today. Call the phone number at the bottom of your screen and order The Exodus Case by Dr. Leonard Moeller, $34.95 plus shipping and handling. Now, we've also offered the video uh, in times past, and we want to make it available to you now as well. This is the companion video to the book. And you will see the underwater cameras drop over the side down in the Red Sea and taking pictures of the chariot wheels and axles, etc. This sells for $19.95. You can order it from us, plus shipping and handling. Or if you'd like to have it on DVD, you can get it for $24.95, plus shipping and handling. Now, if you order the book and the video, your choice of either one, we will add a bonus, a one-year subscription to Prophecy in the News magazine. That's a $29.95 uh, subscription free, just as a bonus, just for ordering the book and the tape. Now, if you were to go down to a bookstore, you might find the book, you might not. You might find the video, you might not. But you won't get a year subscription to Prophecy in the News by buying it anywhere else. So call the phone number at the bottom of your screen. We have operators standing by. We can get this thing out to you this week. We got them in the warehouse. We're ready to ship them out. We want you to have it. Now remember, please, airtime costs a lot of money. We must do this in order to be able to minister to you and stay on the air. Um, we just ask you to support us. And uh, by doing that, we can minister to you and help you in your studies of the Bible by simply getting this book, The Exodus Case. And by the way, I want to make a quick comment, uh, J.R., about the relationship between the videos and the book. The videos give you just an amazing introduction to this whole scenario. But the book allows you to go down and study things in detail, including uh, the wreckage of Pharaoh's chariots at the bottom of the sea, which Dr. Mullard has uh, put in enlarged form. He's clarified by, by uh, outlining and coloring portions of the wreckage so that you can understand what you're looking at. In other words, the book allows you to go into great detail. It's exciting, I promise you. Yeah, and he has those bones, Oh yeah, human bones, uh, bones of horses, oh, yes. and uh, it, it's all there. It's been there for over 3,000 years, and it's interesting that God has chosen in these days, in this generation, to bring all this stuff to light because this is the century of the second exodus of Israel. Uh, you know, Jeremiah once said, there'll come a day when they'll no longer say God brought us from Egypt, but God brought us home from the world. Well, this is J.R. Church and Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported ministry sponsored by our many friends across America and in your area. For your gift of $10, you can receive a special edition of our current program on audio tape, or for a gift of $20, we'll send you our programs on videotape. For either order, call the 800 number on your screen right now.